Hello and welcome to lecture 9, the SAS Companion. Um, this one is going to show you how to do um, random effects in SAS, or at least introduce you to doing random effects in SAS. Um, it does require a different proc. Um, it requires proc mixed, which we'll see in just a moment. The data is going to come from example 2 on page 526. So let's go ahead and throw that in there. Okay, so I'm going to start SAS. And there's the data. It really does, it, it really is important for you to double check that you got the data in there correctly. So after you load the data, you will want to do some proccing of variates. First, you can do them all by themselves. Um, according to page 526, the grand mean should be 31.13. And we see that in the bottom, uh, bottom right of the table. We can get the column means by specifying class blocks. Did I call it block or blocks? I called it block. Now with that, we can see that in block 5, the average is 32.67. That matches the book. In block 4, 33.33. That matches. Block 3, it's 26.67. That matches. Block 2, 34.83. That matches. And block 1, uh, 28.17. That matches. So we agree on the blocks. Let's just double check that we also agree on the varieties. So varieties C, the mean is 28.8. That matches. I'm looking at the means column on the right. Uh, variety B, the mean is 29.9. That matches. And variety A is 34.7. That matches. OK, so the data is in there correctly. I don't need the proc univariate anymore. So let's start the next new proc. It's proc mixed. Um, this helps with mixed analysis where you have both random and fixed. Um, also does allow for a different way of fitting the model. Um, the structure is very much the same. Data equals wheat. And now it's going to take three lines. First, it's going to list out all the classes. This is going to list out not just the fixed effect classes, but also the RAM effects. The next one is the model statement. And again, it's and in the model, it's the dependent variable. Here, it's the yield. Then an equal sign, and then all of the fixed effects. So here, you would just add variety. And the last is the random statement. We have to specify, OK, block is definitely going to be a random effect. Now let's run this and see what we get. So here's the start. So the mixed procedure tells us the data set. The yield is the dependent variable. The structure we're going to use is variance components. Estimation method is REML, which is a restricted maximum likelihood. This is preferred over the method of moments, which is covered in the book briefly. Um, the mathematics behind this requires higher level calculus, and it's beyond the scope of this course. Just realize that REML gives better estimates than does the method of moments. Um, two class variables. Variety has three levels, A, B, and C. Block has five levels, one, two, three, four, five. Number of observations read and used are 15. Now REML is an iterative process, which means you're going to have to get an estimate what the computer does is it gets an estimate, then uses that estimate to estimate something else, and then uses that something else estimate to go back and estimate the original item, and then repeat that over and over. Um, all you're checking here is that the convergence, convergence criteria are met. If it says this, smiley face. If it doesn't, okay, you got some problems. 
Those problems usually are due to a uh, lack of homoscedasticity, um, or sometimes they're due to the blocking being very, very bad, uh, with the uh, explained variance really close to zero, or very, very, very good, in which case would ca uh, cause the the variation in the the your fixed effect to be close to zero. Um, in all the time that I've been doing SAS, uh, doing this analysis in SAS, I've never had convergence not met. But then I don't deal with really fancy analysis of variance stuff. These are the estimates for the sigmas. The top one is the estimate of the sigma hat. What were we calling that in the book? Sigma hat beta, I believe. And the bottom is the estimate of the sigma hat epsilon. Um, then we got the fit statistics. We'll discuss this more in the future, like as an extended example or extra information. And then the type 3, this is your ANOVA table, or it's actually a uh, summarized ANOVA table. Uh, variety, numerator degrees of freedom, denominator degrees of freedom, F value, P value. Since P value is less than alpha, at least one of the varieties has a different mean yield than the others. Okay. That's all we got from that. We know at least one's different. Um, now we got these estimates for the sigmas. And the first thing I want to do is find out if these are significantly different from one. If the blocking actually did something good. I know the estimate for the blocking variance is 11.8083, but is that significantly different from one? If the variance is, I'm sorry, different from zero. So we'll go back here and in order to get those confidence intervals, we have to add two things to the PROC mixed statement. The first is COV test, that's for covariance test, and that'll give us a test statistic and a p-value. And I also like including CL for confidence interval. Hmm, that should be CI, but it's actually CL. We'll run that and see what we get that's new. Um, the covariance parameter estimates is the only table that's changed because of that. Before, we just had the estimates. Now we've got standard errors, test statistics, z-values, p-values associated with those, the alpha level that we specified, and then the confidence interval. Notice the p-value for the residual is less than alpha. I really don't care about that. It's the p-value for the blocking that I care about. Since the p-value is greater than alpha, that means that the blocking did not do anything significant. Now, with that said, these p-values, um, based on the z, on the z-value, uh, these p-values make the assumption that the number of levels is large. Here, the number of levels is 5. We really want the number of levels to be in excess of 10 for this p-value to actually have a good meaning. And second of all, even if I do find out that this is not a, a good blocking, then there's really not much I can do about it, because I already did the experiment. I already blocked. All I can do now is say, OK, it wasn't a good enough blocking. In the future, I'll try something different. But the reality is, I've got this blocking. It exists. It is a fundamental part of the experiment. Therefore, no matter what, I have to keep it in the analysis. OK, let's also. Uh, let's see, we know one of the varieties is different. We don't know which one. Um, so let's do some uh, contrasts. First thing we do on contrast is try to figure out what the order of the, of, the, of the levels. We'll go ahead and do the stroke E there and run it. And this is how SAS gives us the stroke E's now. We have to determine which type of coefficients we want. We're going to go with the type 3 which means if I want to uh, compare A and C, I'll use 1, 0, negative 1. If I want to compare B and C, I'll do 1 and negative 1. And I'll figure out some way of doing A and B if I really want to. So using that information, I can now do an estimate statement. Um, which variety should we match? Let's go variety A versus variety C. Hope I spelled everything correctly. And again, the, the, the class function is variety. 
and then we give the contrast, which in this case is very simple, 1, 0, negative 1. And we'll run that. So there's the summarized ANOVA table, and here's the estimates. There's our contrast, the estimate is 5.9. Standard error degrees of freedom, p values greater than alpha, I mean, sorry, p values less than alpha. Therefore, this difference between A and C is significant. Uh, which did we put as positive? We put A as positive. Therefore, A is, has a greater yield than C in the population. And in this sample, our estimate of that difference is 5.9. And if we wanted to, we could also do variety B versus C. There doesn't seem to be much difference between varieties B and C. In the sample, they differ on average by 1.1. The p-value is greater than alpha, therefore we cannot conclude that the population means are different. Let's see what happens if we do A versus B. The estimate doesn't really surprise us. If A minus C is 5.9 and B minus C is 1.1, then A minus B must be 4.8. P-value, uh, less than alpha. Therefore, we know A is greater than C and A is greater than B, but we didn't detect a difference between B and C. Now, let me clarify something here. What we just did was post hoc analysis with absolutely no adjustments made. It is beyond the scope of this course to deal with post-hoc analysis where we do those adjustments. I'll let you f play with SAS to figure it out. It doesn't take much to do it, but it's still beyond the scope of the course. So this is it. The new thing, two new things, is we're using PROC mixed instead of PROC GLM, and we now have a random statement. This class statement still requires you to specify all of the categorical variables involved. The model still is the dependent variable with an equal sign followed by the fixed effects, if such exists. And then the new thing is the random statement that includes all the random effects. And that's really it. Once you get the hang of SAS, it's pretty easy to program. It just takes a while to get the hang of SAS. So, hope you enjoy this. Take care of yourself. This was Lecture 9.